Hi everyone, it's Amanda Murphy and I'm here today to tell you how I quilted the second block of my Meadow Minis pattern. So as you know, this is a quilt as you go block of the month. So once I was ready with the block, I based it around the entire edge through my quilt sandwich and then I stitched in the ditch around all the major elements. And then you can see here, I'm going to echo around the diamond, starting from that central point in the flower and going a, not quite to that next point. So you see there, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of coming in and echoing that diamond. I'm actually lining the quarter inch mark on my ruler up with that diamond point. So when I stitch to the, right there, I'm a little further away from the corner. Now I'm going to stitch to the uh, very tip of my flower petal. Okay, so to... Now, for the next corner, I'll stitch a little bit away from the corner again. So you can see the quarter inch line on my ruler is lined up right on the corner of my diamond so that when I stitch, I'm stitching a diamond that's a little skinnier than the actual piece diamond. So now I'm coming back to the center. And coming back to the center uh, helps me travel easily without having to end my threads. If I had just echoed in the diamond evenly on all sides, you can see I'm doing it in this diamond now. If I had echoed in the diamond evenly on, uh, evenly on all sides, I would have had to stop and start each time. But since I'm ending in the same place as I'm starting, I can save time. Now see how I'm lining that quarter inch line on the ruler up on the corner of the diamond right there. So I'm echoing in and then I go back to my center. And now you can see the same method with the Bernina ruler. So you can see the quarter inch line there and it's laying right on top of the corner of my diamond. So I'm stitching out to the corner and then to the point of the diamond. And then I'm gonna have to hold my ruler at a funny angle here because I need to get that other quarter inch. You can see the quarter inch line right there. So actually that, that point that I'm stitching is going to be half inch away from uh, the piece point because you have the quarter inch from, of the ruler and you also have the quarter inch from the needle to the edge of my ruler foot. Okay, so now once I did that, I decided to add detail to the grass area. And here I'm showing you the various markings I have that I can use to quilt piano keys. So I go a little bit um, up the edge of my grass and then I quilt down the grass. And those, those etched lines on the ruler help me keep my lines on the quilt top very even. So you can see here, I am quilting three quarters of an inch away on the ruler. That means it's a one, one inch line away from my, my previous quilting line because of course you have to add in that quarter inch between the edge of the foot and the needle. So I'm quilting a line every inch. And I'm going to continue until I finish the filling in the grassy area. Now, I've already done the stitch in the ditch along the edge of the leaf here. Um, so I can travel over my previous stitching lines. Okay, so I keep traveling. And the advantage of ruler work, well, really, it's twofold. One, you don't have to rotate your quilt if you're on a domestic machine. And two, you don't have to do as much marking on your quilt top, which is always good. Okay, so you can see uh, how I'm doing the piano keys. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about how I fill in these piano keys. Now you could really fill it in with stipples or pebbles or whatever you wanted. I chose to do ribbon candy. So when I do ribbon candy, this is a close up, you can see I'm going around a circle and then coming straight back down to the other circle. Around a circle, straight back down, around a circle, straight back down. And I'm usually thinking about going around a dime or a quarter. Uh, ribbon candy can be tricky when you're first starting with quilting, so you can also do loops, and that looks just as good. Um, loops are, are pretty easy because of how closely they're related to our handwriting. Here's the ribbon candy again. In and out. You know, ribbon candy's funny. I love it because it works up really quickly, but uh, I have to practice it every time I do it just to get in the rhythm. Um, and make sure that I'm consistent. Now here, in this area, I just quilt uh, sort of little humps to 
imitate the ribbon candy bean behind that uh, leaf. Okay, so now I'm showing you the westerly ruler here and the lines on the westerly ruler. And I'm going to use this to quilt piano keys as well on the other side. All rulers have quarter inch markings, so you can really use uh, whatever ruler you'd like to that's easy to hold. I am quilting on a long arm here, but the procedure for quilting is exactly the same on a domestic machine. The difference being that you have to feed your fabric and your ruler through at the same time. Now the last step of this block is doing some gentle meanders, whatever you choose to do in this background. Um, this diamond print, oh gosh, I loved it for cross hatches in this collection. Um, this is the Meadow Dance collection that I did uh, for Contempo of Better Text, but I just felt like that area needed some meandering or something more organic. So there you have it, block two, Meadow Minis.